Good morning, friends, and welcome to Elementary Large Group. My name is Miss Emily, and I am so excited that you're here watching with us. It's December, and all month long, we are going to be learning together and celebrating Christmas. I can't wait to see what Bible story we have today and what we can learn from it about Christmas. Before we get there, though, be sure to let us know you're watching with us online by saying hello in the comments. And parents, later on, keep an eye out on your email as you should be receiving an email from either myself or Miss Christine, and that is going to contain your Parent Q and God Time cards for this week for you to use at home as a follow-up to our lesson today. And now, friends, let's get started with Large Group. awesome time of the year, Christmas. My name is Miss Drew and I'm so excited that you're here with me today at Elementary Large Group. I don't know about you, but I look forward to Christmas all year long. It's such a fun time when we get to celebrate with our family and friends and everything gets covered in lights and decorations. It's just awesome. Now, can you tell me why we celebrate Christmas? Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. All month long, we're celebrating the gift of Jesus and talking about the true meaning of Christmas. You see, Christmas may be big and fancy and exciting, but it's also simple. There's no assembly required for this holiday. Jesus is the greatest gift we've ever been given. To start us off with a little fun, I thought we might take something that we see a lot during Christmas. The Christmas gift. The Christmas gifts are so fun and it's really awesome to open them up on Christmas Day and see what kind of treats and goodies are inside. So as you can see, I've got my Christmas gift here and in it I have some common Christmas things that you might be able to find around your house. So let's see what's inside. First, I've got a Christmas gift bag and then I've got a little tiny Christmas gift. I've got a present bow. I have a beautiful ornament. I've got a pine cone. I've got a little angel like you might find on top of your Christmas tree. I've got a nativity scene. Oh, so cool. Then I've got a Santa hat, the most fun. And then I've got a big red string of Christmas tinsel. Do you have any of these items around your house? Well, our game today is a bit of a scavenger hunt. You'll have 60 seconds to find as many of the items that I showed you in this box inside of your house. Are you ready to get looking? Ready, go. video if you need a moment to tally up your points. How many items did you find? Share your score with us in the comments below. Christmas decorations and stockings and gifts are great and all, but remember all that stuff isn't really what Christmas is about. Our Bible story today will help you understand a little more what I mean. So let's get ready and set our sacred large group space together. Hi friends, it's now time to set our sacred large group space together and with God. When we light these candles and we set our space, we're not only getting ourselves ready to listen and hear our Bible story for today, but we're also reminding ourselves and one another that in this space, right now, 
we are not alone. We are in this space that we are creating together with one another and with God. And so I have three candles and these candles represent someone, don't they? They represent someone who is in this space with us. Someone who we are taking a moment to talk to and to sit with and to listen to. So these three candles represent God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So to set our space, as I light each one of these candles, I want you to say out loud with me, God the Creator, God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is here in this space with you and with me. And now friends, let's watch our Bible story video for today. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Jess stared out the window at the ice beating down. Every holiday planned for the weekend had been canceled. And to top it off, the school had just released Jess's most recent grades. A D in language arts? What happened, Jess? I don't know. You're such a good storyteller. I just, I can't make all the words work out when I try to write it down. Can I go play Mindstorm? Hun, you need to read for an hour first. An hour? I thought it was 30 minutes. Your teacher and I talked. We think a little more reading time will help. Jess glared. I don't have anything to read. You've got an entire bookshelf in your room. Those are little kid books. Then look at Emma's bookshelf. Emma was Jess's older sister, already in high school. Fine, whatever. Jess stalked upstairs to Emma's room, peeked inside. The room was empty, but everything was neatly organized. Emma had even done all of the colorful artwork on her own walls. Miss Perfect. Jess sighed. Everything seemed to come easily to Emma. Writing, math, friends, life. I'll probably be stuck in fifth grade for the rest of my life. Jess stood in front of Emma's bookshelf, running her finger over the thick spines. At last, a swirl of color on the bottom shelf caught her eye. Comic book Bible, huh. Jess thumped down onto the floor and pulled the book off the shelf. She flipped it open and color exploded off the page. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The images of creation were vivid and detailed, as if she were right there. Huh, pretty cool. Jess found herself drawn into the familiar stories, seeing and hearing them in a brand new way. Moses and the Red Sea, the fall of Jericho, David and Goliath. Esther, boldly approaching the king. <clears throat> David's incredible poetry in the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. After the Psalms though, Jess paged into unfamiliar territory. Isn't Daniel in the lion's den around here somewhere? Who's this guy? Jess stared at a man with a long white beard, using a quill to scribble on a scroll. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. Hey! Jess nearly dropped the book. She glanced up to see Emma standing in the doorway. What are you doing in my room? Mom said I could pick a book. Well, ask next time, okay? I didn't touch anything. 
Okay, okay, it's fine. Emma settled down on the floor beside Jess and took a look at the book. Aunt Chris gave me this book when I started high school. It's pretty cool. I mean, until this part. It's kind of hard to make a guy writing a letter exciting. Jess pointed out Mr. Whitebeard. Oh, you mean Isaiah? Who's he talking about? Jesus? Yeah, but it's way more amazing when you look at the big picture. You see, God's people were in big trouble. Over and over, the Israelites promised to love and obey God. And then every single time, they turned their backs on Him. Turned their backs? Like how? Well, they'd start praying to false gods like other nations around them, trying to do things their own way. So God allowed them to be captured by other nations. Emma flipped back, showing images of battles, powerful foreign kings, groups of captives. The Israelites got in really big trouble. Things looked hopeless. So God just ditched them? No way. Every single time, God showed He was still with them. He sent kings who loved God, like David and Solomon and Josiah. And He sent prophets like Elijah and Isaiah to speak God's truth and hope to the people. Even though they totally messed up? Yep. Through it all, God promised that He was going to send someone who would rescue them forever. Just flipped back to Isaiah and read slowly. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. That's only one prophecy. There are hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament that talk about Jesus coming. Jess nodded, trying to take it in. That's a lot of promises. And God came through. The Israelites had to wait a long time, but God kept every single one of those promises when He sent Jesus to live on earth. His very own son. Oh, little town of Bethlehem and all that. You can take the book if you want. Emma tapped the comic book Bible just smiled. Does God promise that I'll get a better grade in language arts? <laughs> no, but He does promise to be with you and give you the patience and courage you need to keep working on it. They both listened to the ice rattling against the window. Hey, you want to play Mindstorm? Sure, just let me read a little more first. Emma gave a thumbs up and just settled back down to keep reading. She paged forward to the book of Luke, eager to see for herself again how God had delivered on His promise to send a Savior. Our God is a promise keeper. Through the words of Isaiah, God promised that He would send a Savior. God's promise came true when He sent Jesus. God was faithful to keep His promises in the past, and we know that He will keep His promises today and in the future. Our bottom line for today is, we can have hope because God keeps His promises. Sometimes things happen in life that we just don't understand. Sometimes we feel anxious or scared about what will happen in the future. But we can always have hope because we know that God keeps His promises. Christmas might look a little bit different this year. It's been a tough year for a lot of us, but the real meaning of Christmas is something we can celebrate no matter what. It's not about great gifts or even delicious treats. Christmas is about celebrating the gift of Jesus. When you remember how God sent Jesus for you and that He keeps all of His promises, you can have hope in any situation. Our memory verse for this month is Luke 2.11. Let's read it together. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2.11 all month, let's work to memorize this because it's a great reminder of the real meaning of what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about remembering that God keeps His promises. It's about celebrating God's greatest gift, His Son, Jesus. So let's pray and ask God to help us remember that this year. Dear God, thank you for reminding us that during this time of year that you keep your promises every single time. Thank you for the promise of Jesus. 
Thank you for the hope that we have in him. Please help us remember what you did for your people and for us when you sent Jesus to be our Savior. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining me this month. I can't wait to learn more about Christmas and how we can remember to celebrate God's greatest gift. Bye! You